So we're going to look at the 4G63 engine in this video, and we're going to be talking about the common problems and pitfalls that people have. Now, thankfully, Mitsubishi have made a really reliable engine. The 4G63 is phenomenally well made, nicely balanced, nicely set up, and the amount of engineering that's gone into designing the engine and the components that go into it, it's top notch. So you've got a really good engine there. So this video really is just to highlight some of the common areas and problems to look out for. And in a lot of cases, a lot of these have been overstated in forums and online, which is often the case. You find a few people have a problem and they tend to make quite a big noise about it when in reality, the majority of people have not had these problems whatsoever. So let's discuss some of the most common problems that are likely to crop up on the 4G63 if you have problems at all. So crank walk can be a big problem. So the crank sits at the bottom of the engine, the pistons connect to it and it's rotating. So it's doing a lot of work. It's taking a lot of stress from all the components and it's converting the up down motion from the pistons into rotational motion that can go to the wheels to drive the wheels. So crank walk is a condition where the thrust bearings start to wear and it's something that's associated with the seven bolt flywheel versions. So the thrust surface, the thrust bearing surface or the thrust face is a specific area of the bearing that handles the axial load that's generated by your engine. The crankshaft has a thrust collar that has been very precisely machined to make contact with the surface of the thrust bearings. The thrust surface of the main bearings is typically much larger in size compared to other bearing surfaces and they do that to distribute the axial load over a larger area and prolong the longevity of the engine. One of the biggest problems with this setup up is the friction cause so you certainly require decent lubrication and often these bearings will completely fail and you'll start to experience crank walk if that lubrication starts to fail or you start to get excessive movement as the surfaces wear away. An axial load refers to the force that acts parallel to the center line of an object or component. And in this case, we're talking obviously about the crankshaft. So in simple terms, it's a force that either pushes or pulls along the object's length where the crankshaft moves along its axis or axial direction or thrust direction. It really messes things up inside the engines and the crank movement can in some cases be so severe that it starts to affect the way the crank interfaces with the transmission can make gear selection difficult and can cause other problems even causing a transmission to potentially fail. So if the crankshaft is moving back and forth in its axial direction the wear and tear is going to accelerate. It's going to become much greater and that's true pretty much of any component where you start getting wear between them you start to get more movement than you would expect and that additional movement can just exacerbate the problem and make it substantially worse so it's certainly something you need to address fairly quickly so it's discussed a lot it crops up a lot in forums and online sites that discuss this engine but in reality it's only about one in eight engines that tend to suffer from this problem and when you start analyzing these there's various different designs of the engine and you can tell the design primarily looking at the flywheel itself and whether it's got seven bolts on it. The six bolt flywheel versions didn't seem to have this problem at all. It's not really a hard and fast rule, but in general, from what I've seen and feedback I've had from people, it tends to be the seven bolt ones that tend to have the problem. So it really does pay to make sure these engines are well serviced, that you use premium quality oil, and you'll never have that problem cropping up at all. If you start to notice those vibrations coming from the engine, it's certainly something you really need to address because it will just deteriorate and get worse. So conrod and crankshaft problems have also been been mentioned. Now these typically affect those really early engines. So I'm talking the first eight years or so from about 1980 onwards. So as you would expect the 4G63 double overhead cam turbo engines had forged connecting rods and it was the older non-turbo single overhead cam versions which had these weaker cast rods that you need to keep an eye out for. And they just weren't as strong as the forged steel that was used in the later versions of the engine. So that can result in the bending or breaking of those con rods or those other components in the engine itself. To address these issues Mitsubishi later switched to forged components and the engines were much much stronger later on. But you can also get a wide range of aftermarket components 
that even exceed the stronger ones that manufacturers specified. So overall, we have to say this is a problem that affects those early engines. If you've got a more recent engine, it's certainly not something you particularly need to worry about. If you're starting to push excessive amounts of power through, it certainly makes sense to upgrade those components anyway. And other than the odd electrical system in the spark plug system, or the fuel system. There's very little that goes wrong with these engines. Please let me know in the comments if you've had problems. We'll try our best to get you some sort of solution or direction on how to fix those problems. And I really love people's feedback just to understand engines more thoroughly. And we get a much more rounded out view of these engines and how reliable they are on the basis of the comments that you make. So please boot that like button. It really helps us to get out there if you do that. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.